As an alternative to the Zumo box, you can also get the Spectrum app content on the Apple TV. So let's go through the features and see how the Spectrum app looks on Apple TV OS. So in terms of the interface, it's very similar to what the Spectrum app looks like on the Zumo box. Um, at the top you have Home, then Live TV, and then your Guide. And you'll notice right away the Guide does not have channel buttons. Your favorite channels are still favorited if you'd favorite them on the Zumo box or another version of the Spectrum app. You can see that carries over. We'll go over my library in a minute, but let's skip to On Demand, which is where you get all the shows that you can watch on demand as well as rentals and purchases. So looking at the Apple TV remote control, very similar to the Zumo one. At the top you have your power button. On the right side you have voice control. And in the center you have this wheel just similar where you can do up, right, down, and left, and in the middle is an enter or select button. Underneath that you have a back button on the left. On the right you have the home button, they call it TV or control center. Then you have play pause, mute, and volume up and down. And note, nowhere on this remote are channel buttons because you can't use channel buttons on the Spectrum app on Apple TV. So that's a big ding in terms of how it works on the Zumo box. So now let's take a look at using voice commands to change the channels. We're going to push the voice control button on the right of the remote. Hey Siri, play VH1. Now this is real time so you'll get a sense of how long it takes for it to process the command and then implement the command. It's going to change to VH1 which is playing the movie Red 2. So there it is. It loads. It just takes a second or two. But it is nice to have the voice command option. Now let's take a look at the channel guide in the Spectrum app on Apple TV. It's very similar. You can favorite channels. Um, you can go up and down. You can go to the right on the timeline and back to the left. Uh, and if you hold down that enter button, you can also filter uh, based on the channel. So you can just have your favorites or you can have all channels or sports or however you want. Again, you just have to go to the left and get onto the channel name and then hold down that enter button and you'll be able to filter which is pretty convenient, same as it is on Zumo. A frustrating thing with the channel guide though is you can't go around the horn on the Spectrum app on Apple TV. You can do this on Zumo, but if you get to the bottom alphabetically, you can't hit the down button to continue to go back to the top. You have to go all the way up so it doesn't loop like it does on the uh, Zumo TV. So now let's turn our attention to the DVR. The DVR can be found under my library on the top and any recordings you have from other boxes running the Spectrum app will appear here because it's a cloud DVR. I'm going to drill into this Matlock episode that was recorded and go ahead and hit the play or the watch button. Go ahead and select the watch button for that. So looking at the fast forward and rewinding of recorded or on demand shows, this is a great improvement over what we had on the Zumo box. If you go ahead and hit the play pause button when you're running content, and there it is right there, that happy surprise. You can see in the timeline where you are in the show, which you could not see on the Zumo box. So if you right arrow, you fast forward, and then if you click play pause, you will pick up the, the show in that exact spot. And this episode happens to be a delight. The great Don Knotts is joining Andy Griffith. Of course, they played, a, played across each other on the Andy Griffith show uh, for years. Go ahead and hit the play pause button again and this time hit the left arrow button and it'll rewind um, and then when you get to where you want again you can see a nice preview you just hit the play button and that'll pick up the show right where you were on the timeline so this is a big improvement another sneaky surprise is you get the back 10 seconds button similar to what tivo button has so go ahead and hit the play pause button when you're on a particular point in the show if you miss a line of dialogue or if you just want to go back, you hit the play pause button or the enter button and then just hit the left button once. And what it'll do is it'll go back exactly 10 seconds and resume the show. So it's great if you, if you miss a line of dialogue. And now jumping into recording shows on the DVR, if you're watching a show, you can go ahead and hit the record button and it'll give you the option to set it up. Same as it was on the Zumo box, you can do new only. Um, new or all episodes and then recording will be scheduled 
and you can always edit the recording options later. You can see it in the navigate in the actual guide. You see a little red button next to the, the program name, Small Town Potential, uh, which means it's it's ready to be recorded once it airs. A second way to record is go ahead and uh, hit the down arrow, and then you will have the record or details option. You can go ahead and click record right there, and it'll start recording a show that you're watching in progress. So that's handy too if you've if you can't finish the show and you need to see it, you want to see it through later, you just go ahead and hit the record button, turn it off, come back later. Now again, we have the search button and it works very similar as it did on Zumo. It's up on top. You go ahead and hit that magnifying glass and hit the enter button. It'll bring you to an alphabetical search. You can try to use voice. In my time trying to use voice, I said Columbo and it came up with other things because it spelled Columbo wrong. Um, it made it look like that Columbo wasn't available. Once I figured out it was misspelled, I just used the, uh, I hit the right key to get all the way over to the end there where the delete is next to the XYZ. And I backed it up and replaced the O with a U. Sure enough, there's Columbo. So that's how the search works. Uh, don't be concerned if it doesn't show up at first. Check the spelling and, and try it the, the harder way, spelling it by a letter at a time, if that, if that happens. Of course, the settings are to the right of search in the menu, just like on the Zumo box. You go ahead and drill into that, and you can do your upgrades. Or if you jump down to Preferences, you can select your startup channel, turn it on, and then go in and get a list. There's your favorites. The favorites carry over from a different device. So these are the ones I set up on the Zumo box. Now I'm on the Apple TV box and I get the same favorites. I'm going to set my startup channel and go ahead and save that. And then just hit the back button to get back out. That means every time you open the Spectrum app on Apple TV, that's the channel that it's going to open to. And just going to go through the other settings quick. There's not too much else in here. Uh, they are different settings than you see on the Zumo box because it's reflective of the underlying hardware. And yes, you can turn on captions a couple different ways on the Apple TV for the Spectrum app. The first way is if you're watching the show, you can see on the bottom above the timeline, so you hit the up arrow, and you just go to the right once, once you see that circle selected, there you go, and you get it over the speech bubble and change it from off to on or CC, and then you'll start seeing uh, closed captions or subtitles appearing. This feature is an extension of the TV OS that Apple TV has where you can reduce loud noises. So if you go to the right of captions, you can set it to reduce loud noises. It's pretty handy, especially if you get a lot of commercials that spike the volume really loud which is typically where I see it. And just like on the Zumo box, you can shortcut to the channel guide by just hitting the left button and then hit the left button again to get the full guide. And if you want to get out of it, just hit the back button. Otherwise, you go up and down and select the channel you want. And because you don't have a page up or page down button in the channel guide, you can fast scroll by holding down the up button or holding down the down button in the guide and it'll zoom right through all the channels. And to use last channel there's no dedicated button but if you're on a show you just hit the up button on the remote and that'll give you kind of a short set of tiles that show you the last couple shows you were watching. Typically you just hit the enter button to go back to the last one you were on. You may have to go right or left if it's not updating fast enough. As far as I can tell, that's the easiest way to get to your previous content that you were watching. And you can do quite a bit with voice commands. Using the voice command button to activate it, you can change channels. Hey Siri, play Nickelodeon. It should switch us from Nick Jr. to Nickelodeon. It does take a second or two, but it works pretty good. If you know the channel name, you can switch to it pretty quickly that way. And next on the Apple TV home screen, uh, you can move the Spectrum app once it's installed by in the remote. If you hold down the enter button while you're hovered over the Spectrum app, you'll get a sub menu that says edit home screen. Just hit that enter button a second time and then you can up arrow to move it. You'll see it's jiggling. I'm going to go up three rows and then once to the left. And then when you got it where you want it, just go ahead and hit that enter button again to save it. Which leads us to why you'd want it in that position. If it's in that position, you get up top a row of all your recent channels. So it makes it super easy when you turn it on in the morning. 
to be able to go up there and just click one of those channels and have it tune right into that channel without having to open the spectrum app first, then go to the guide, then select the channel. It saves you one step. And of course you can use a voice command for that as well outside of the spectrum app. So if you hit the voice command button, play HGTV on spectrum app. And once it's processed, it opens the spectrum app to the channel you wanted to watch, which is also very convenient if you know what you like to watch at different times of the day. You can just open it that way. It saves you a ton of steps. Nothing beats channel buttons, though. Um, all these things are kind of shortcuts around that fact that they don't have channel buttons on this remote. You know, at first I was kind of underwhelmed with the spectrum app on Apple TV, and then... I got the Zumo box and I've used that for a long time and now going back to this app. I think the video and audio quality is pretty good and with the DVR function, I think that's the real powerful add-on. I wouldn't get it without the DVR function, but you're still only paying 5 bucks for DVR and 29 and change for the content. So I think it's still a good deal and I'm pretty impressed with it this time around. So thanks again for watching and for commenting. I really enjoy the comments the most. And if you have other questions, please, please post them in the comments and we'll try to get to them. And thank you again for watching.